What's the hardest things about being a YouTuber now? You've been you've been in this for two years now, basically? Um, a year and a half, two years? Full time? Well, full time, yeah. One and a half, yeah. 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 The hardest thing is juggling everything. <laughs> it's, it's very tough. Um, I am struggling a lot. So... Um, welcome to another podcast. We have Leela from, wait, are you from the Netherlands? Yes, okay, I, I was gonna I was going to say Denmark for a second. I was like, no, that's not it. That is such a thing. Like a lot of Americans as well. They've been confusing Denmark with the Netherlands and Danish with Dutch. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I mean, it's kind of all the same here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're, you're half European. You can't, know, say, that, just, you can't say that it's stuff. It's like somebody calling me a Swedish. I'm like, I'm not Swedish. Right? <laughs> you're all the same. But wait. Netherlands, do you, are you, you guys aren't Scandinavian though, right? No, no, no. And so you guys are pretty different then. Yeah. I think, I mean, we're, I mean, with the exception of me, because I'm half Moroccan, half Dutch. Uh, Dutch You're people, half Moroccan, eh? I'm half Moroccan. I did not know that. Um, the Dutch people, they are blonde and blue eyes. So I think that we have that in common. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, there are still a few countries in between. We're like West Northern yeah. Europe, I'd say. I've never actually been to the Netherlands. Which is surprising. Cause Have I've you been... not Dutch GP next year or whenever it is? I know, I know. Well, I'm, now I'm go. going to like every single race. Every we're going to so we're going to Iceland tomorrow, and then we're going to Austin Grand Prix the next weekend. So like we got like a day and a half off or whatever, and then we're straight to that. <laughs> okay, so you're visiting here. Have you done this? Have you come to North America to visit all your YouTuber friends before? Is this the first? This is like the first time. So I went to uh, an event called Vid Summit in 2019 yep. and then the pandemic hit. And I this trip, I've That's been it. seeing so many of my friends for the first time, even though we've yeah. been talking for like two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is like my first time actually meeting a lot of YouTube friends. When did you, when did your channel, when do you feel like it started to take off? Like when did you kind of go full time and all that stuff. Um, so I started my YouTube channel in the summer of 2019. Okay. Um, and then it kind of started snowballing right away and I wasn't Was really it right away it. filmmaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did the whole filmmaking because that's kind of like, I love storytelling. Yeah. So um, that's what I started doing on my channel. And then I went full time one and a half years later when I had a little less than 50,000 subscribers. Okay. Yeah. Nice. What was full time was once you were able to make enough money to quit yes. a job? Or did you have a dip, another job or something? Or are you well, at that moment, I didn't have um, another job due to personal circumstances. Mm. But um, yeah, so I did it full time and I was able to start making nice. my, my, how many my months money. did it take you to go full time? Um, or year, or? so I started in, I think so July, 2019. And then in December, 2020, I went full time. So that's pretty good. That's like seven months or something. No, it's Eight one months? and a half years. No, that's not. Oh, a, a full. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> that's still pretty fast though. Yeah. I think I for a lot so. of people, like they talk about like, Oh, I did YouTube for 10 years before I you know. Like, yeah. And I, like, I, I, like for me, it took, four months or three months or something like that it was full time but it was because i had like a i had a very different situation i think because i had already been in the filmmaker world i was already freelancing and so it was pretty easy to tr transition mm -hmm. to it and as soon as youtube kind of took off for me which was like the first tutorial took off and then it was yeah, like was. yeah yeah i mean i definitely had you know i think i had the the, the puzzle pieces there and i just had to put it together and then it was like all right let's go you know whereas a lot of people start youtube with like they haven't done things yet, you know, they haven't been in this world or that world. It's yeah. really easy or much easier, I think, to come to YouTube or social media when you've already, you know, you're a pro soccer player or something like that, yeah. football where you guys are, yeah, and then, you know, you start a YouTube channel. It's like, oh, I know that person, you know, or, or, or I respect that what he's done, you know, or she's done. Um, what was it like for you? YouTube, did you want to become a YouTuber for a while? Like, was this just like a... a Oh, okay. I'm a YouTuber now. Like, how did that happen for you? It was the latter. I, when I started YouTube, my goal was to hopefully find some people online, have some online friends who share the same passion as me, because in the Netherlands, I don't really have any of these creative friends around me. Right. So that was the goal was to just like do something that I love because actually I wanted to start a video production company. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, when you have to build your portfolio, you have to do free work. Yeah. It was fucking, was fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> It's okay, you can swear, that's fine. <laughs> we're already starting with the uh, F-bombs. And this video is demonetized now, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no, but it, w it wasn't good. Um, so I was like, okay, you know what? I'm actually noticing that when you do, uh, when you have a, 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 like a video production company, 
you still can be as creative as you want to be. So mm. I wanted to start YouTube for that reason and also find some online friends to share my passion with. Yeah. And then it just snowballed and it turned into this thing that I never thought it would be. I was also like, me? Why? Mm. Mm. I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah. So at one point I was like, because Adobe reached out to me when I was doing YouTube for like a few months and oh, nice. I had like a thousand subscribers. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure you're talking to the right person? You know, an epidemic reached out very early on. Yeah. I was like, why do these brands want to work with me? It was yeah. so weird. So yeah, for me, it was never a goal to become a YouTuber, but I'm very, very grateful that mm. I am in the position that I am today. I don't think that that feeling ever changes. I'm still like, uh, are you sure you want me here? <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to fly to Austin. Like, am I going to get, like, you guys are going to let me in? Like, you sure you're going to let me into the Grand Prix? Like, to take photo video there? Like, yeah, everything still feels so bizarre to me. And this, uh, this yeah. is like year six or something for me. Like, yeah, it's so surreal. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. It's also surreal when you watch people and you have so much respect for certain people and what they do. And now they're your friends. It's just mm. this whole, it's, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird how that happens, but it, I love it. And yeah. Well, I mean, like everybody, everybody's just a normal person, right? You meet people yes. like, oh, they're great. Like, but they're like a normal person, you know, like, yeah, you know, exactly. everybody has their flaws and good sides and like, you know, everybody's just a normal person. And yeah, it, it is. The more, more you've kind of looked up to somebody, the more like, you know, crazy it is to, to meet. I was, I love the. Have you had this where people ask you for a selfie and their hands start shaking, you know, like the, yes, <laughs> that's the best. And everybody has that. Everybody has somebody who gives you that effect. I think it's so surreal because I, this year, um, the, the reason of my trip was to see friends, but also to go to this event called Vit Summit again. Mm, yeah. And I met a lot of people there that I've been watching my channel, which again was, was like, what, why are you watching my channel? Yeah. You know, it's just so weird, yeah. but I loved it so much to meet to meet these people and to hear their stories about how my content has helped them in any mm, way and then yeah. you see you know the little little shaky hand yeah, thing yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like oh my god i'm just me <laughs> yeah but yeah i get it i get it but that's a, also an interesting thing that i think most people don't realize is that no matter what your life is like your life feels normal so and normal. like yeah. normal and like uh, boring is not the right word but it's like it's just not it's just yeah this is my life but to other people your life is exotic right yeah. uh, to other people it's like oh that's interesting you live where Oh, you do what? You know? Yeah. And then, you know, that's vice versa, you know? It's actually funny that you mentioned that because one thing that I've learned is that now that I'm doing YouTube and because I am pretty rare because I live in the Netherlands and um, people, because most of most of the people that watch my stuff, they're American or Canadian. Mm. So they love seeing me go into my city. I'm like, my city? Have you seen my city? They're like, oh my God, look at this. This is so great. This is so beautiful. That's the thing. And they've actually taught me to look at my own city differently oh, yeah. and go like, oh, you know what? This is actually yeah. a pretty cool city, but it's so normal for me. That's the, the perfect example. To yeah. you, it's like, these are just normal buildings. This is normal, normal stores. Yeah. And to us, it's like, oh, that's Europe. You know? Yeah, literally when I arrived in LA, I saw traffic signs. I've been only been taking photos of traffic signs because I love them so much. <laughs> it's what I see in movies. Uh, so I totally tra get that people think that way of my city, but I've been <laughs> taking photos of traffic lights, yeah. of traffic signs, of all the all the boring quote unquote things here on this side. I mean, we're in like a small town in Ontario. Like this is not like, there's nothing really special about that. Other than they do film some like movies and TV show, Handmaid's Tale. I don't know if you should watch that. That was like, there was a scene right there. Oh really? Like, yeah, oh, I need to check I it got, out. I got kicked off set. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like a normal small town that like doesn't have, but then like some people will come here I'm like this is like a movie set because they've seen that yes. on my videos and Peter's videos and you know like yes. to them it's like being on a movie set and like to most people this is like a tiny nobody town you know <laughs> like, I mean after this podcast I'm definitely going to be walking around for a few hours because <laughs> I love it so much it's so cute it's so yeah. beautiful yeah I mean it does have a cool vibe it's a nice little like old school old town but yeah yeah it's just I guess for you it's probably yeah, boring it's, yeah exactly it's the same old same old you know so do you consider yourself more Canadian or European hmm, that's a tough question I think well in Canada the culture is that you move to Canada and you hold on to your culture so you don't 
it's not a melting pot. Not mm -hmm. everybody becomes like America is, I think, different in that you become American. Whereas here you're like, I'm Finnish Canadian, some Italian, Can you know, like, and so you, you hold on to your, your like, um, all your cult culture and, and all that. So when I'm here, I feel, I think more Finnish, uh, still mm -hmm. Canadian, of course, but I feel more Finnish. But then when I go to Finland, I feel maybe a little bit more Canadian there. Oh, that's it's that weird. contrast. Yeah. 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 But I, I could both feel very homey nowadays. Okay, like good. both, I could go back, uh, you know, if taxes were a little bit better or for small businesses were a little <laughs> bit better, I could move to Finland. Um, uh, slash I can't move because then taxes screw me here. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I could live in either. Yeah. What do you think about North America? For you as a European, would you move here? Would you move to Canada? Would you move to America? I mean, you've only been here for like <laughs> a couple of days. Yeah, so I mean, I would say yes, but only because I have so many friends on this side of the ocean. And still, you know, Canada and the US, they're a very big countries. So it's not like, very oh, different. I'm going to move to the US and now all my friends are around me. Yeah. Um, but when I was in LA, for example, and I was able to hang out with so many of my friends, it was such a good time. And that made me think like, okay, when I go home, I'm going to be by myself again. Yeah. And YouTube is already a pretty lonely job, right? So then not having any creative friends around, um, that's definitely reason for me to want to move. But if I'm going to move to North America, I think Canada is more attracting to me than the U.S. <laughs> oh, all the Americans are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, Canada is yeah. a good country to live in. It's just cold. It's interesting. You said that YouTube is a lonely thing. Mm. I don't think that most people that that don't do YouTube, that just watch YouTube, yeah. would would think that being a YouTuber is a lonely thing. Oh, it's... Disclaimer, I'm very grateful. I don't <laughs> yeah. want to complain oh, yeah. about yeah, yeah, my yeah, job yeah, yeah. because I there's nothing I would rather do, but there's definitely a few downsides to it. Like, I think something that people don't realize is that you're just by yourself. I mean, you have Tyler here, which is great, and you have mm. an editor as well. Yeah, on, yeah right Isaac, here. yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you're just doing everything by yourself, you wake up, I work from home. So I wake up, I sit behind my computer all day, might film a video or might edit all day. Mm. And then I go to bed yeah. and then the next day it's the same thing. Yeah. And it can get a lot after a long time. Right. Yeah. And it would be so cool to just call up a friend and be like, <laughs> Hey, let's film a video together. Or yeah. when you were sh sharing your office with Pete, yeah. um, th things like that would make it a lot, yeah. a lot more fun. Also sharing an office with somebody has this as it's <laughs> no. spill the tea, sis. No, I, I, I actually, it was super fun having Peter here, but there is like, oh, are you shooting a video? Am I shooting a video? Mm. Like, yeah, it's like these like little things. And you know how YouTube is so fast paced that like any little like, yeah. oh, I have to do this extra step. It's just like annoying. You kind of want, want to cut out all that and just make it as like smooth as possible to get to filming whatever yeah. video you need to film or whatever. You know, like today we're, we're traveling tomorrow. So like today we got to get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. If we were in the same office right now, like Peter's trying to get his stuff. I'm trying to get my stuff done. It'd be chaos, you know? Yeah, I get that. Um, but then, yeah, of course, it, it'd be, it's it's nice to, you know, you come here and you have your friend right away. It's like, oh, you missed that. Yeah. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Gosh, that's a good question. It depends on how you how you define introvert and extrovert. Are we talking about how, to, how we recharge or how we are around people? Hmm. I think the recharge is like the true, yeah, true uh, measure of like if you're an introvert ex mm -hmm. extrovert. Because like I, I, I'd say I'm an introvert, but I can turn on and like be an extrovert. Yeah, you don't seem like an, an introvert. Yeah, like I, and, in terms and I, of and I love this kind of thing yeah. talking. To, but then like, uh, do I want to be at a party with a uh, hundred people? No, no, like that's not yeah. my thing. Like, and I'm gonna be exhausted after. Like, I yeah. just wanna want to be by myself. So I would measure by that. Like, mm, I think. I honestly don't know. I feel like I'm a mixture of both. Ambivert. Am ambivert? Is ambivert. ambivert. I think that's a thing. I'm pretty ambivert, sure. <laughs> ambivert. Yeah, probably probably something like that. Because during this trip, I have not had a single moment to myself. I've just been with people the entire time from the moment that I wake up mm. until I go to bed. And I'm fine. So then I would think, oh, maybe I'm an extrovert. But I also love being by myself and just yeah. hanging with my cats, watching some <laughs> Netflix, yeah. watching some YouTube. So I don't know. I haven't really I haven't really figured out what yeah. I am. I, the reason why I ask is... I think a lot of YouTubers are introverts yeah. and people think that they're extroverts mm -hmm. and it, it, it like, it doesn't intuitively, it's like, well, how can you be an introvert? You're talking to thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And it's like, well, no, I'm just talking to a camera. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't see any of those people. <laughs> like, exactly. And for me, a lot of times, and you know, like talking about sharing offers and stuff, 
I would actually love to come to the office and not have anybody here. Oh, wow. Yeah. And just like have, and that's probably because I have two kids, like I'm married. And yeah. so like kids are on me all the time. And like, you know, I don't get it. I, I'm the dad that plays with the kids and, you know, yeah. and it's like, I don't get downtime at home basically. And so it'd be nice to come to the office and just like, just get to focus on my thing. But at the same time, I know if I want to do certain things, I'm going to need help. I can't yeah. do everything by myself. And so it's like this this balance of good sides and bad sides. Like yeah. you're saying, uh, you get lonely, but you know maybe it maybe it is better that way still. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it would be better to like be here and have my own space, but then also be able to go yeah. out. I think that would be the best of both worlds for sure. Is there just nobody that does YouTube like you do YouTube, or they're doing it in? Dutch. Dutch. Danish? <laughs> Danish. Dutch. Yeah, it's Dutch. That was so funny. Um no, there's I, I think that there's not a not a lot of people. Um the filmmaking niche definitely isn't as big in the Netherlands as it is in uh the US and Canada. Yeah. And then most of the people that I know on YouTube in the Netherlands are mostly like Dutch lifestyle influencers mm, who right. just vlog their day. Yeah. Um but no one really like us, I'd mm. say, that I know of. Yeah. If you if you're listening and you're from the <laughs> Netherlands, please hit me up. <laughs> but also, why not? Why not hit up the other YouTubers that are doing lifestyle or whatever, whatever? Yeah. Like, because I, I, like I, I really enjoy. For example, I was in Saudi Arabia um, for the Grand Prix and with a tourism board, and I didn't know anybody on that trip, mm. and not not nobody else was a filmmaker, photographer, except for one guy. He does these like paper cutouts, and then like takes these cool photos where they like yeah. fit into the scene of like the city or whatever. Um, really cool paper boy. Um, but I was the only one that was like a filmmaker, photographer, other than him, and like it was really fun. Like yeah. I loved. Like when I would take some photos and then I send them to them and they're like, what? Like you took these? Like if I was just with a bunch of other photographers and filming, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, cool. Thanks. Can I, can I post that? You know, like, yeah. but like they had completely different reactions. They weren't trying to get the same shot as me. They were just hanging out and I could film them. I could interact with them. Yeah. I really actually liked it like that. Yeah, maybe I should. I mean, I've tried to reach out to a few people, but I think that also in the Netherlands, because my channel is so different mm. not a lot of people know of me as well so it's also kind of hard to make that connection i feel like yeah i've reached out to a few agencies um because i would love to you know get some more help with the brand deal side of things because as yeah. a youtuber we have to do everything yeah. and it's a lot of things yeah. so like it, i just want to make vids man i just yeah. want to make videos <laughs> yeah. so I was trying to find someone that could help me with that in the Netherlands, but n it seems like no one really knows what to do with me because my mm. channel is in English and it's also very tech and filmmaking yeah. and they're all representing the same kind of, you know, like yeah. lifestyle influencers. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I definitely have to put a little bit more effort in it too. Yeah. I've also find that like in s smaller countries or not America yeah. countries, like, Oh, the whole influencer world is very different, I think. Yeah. Like at least uh, like I, I'm I mostly think about Finland because I know a little bit more about Finland. Like a lot of the, you know, the YouTubers or social media people, they'll also get slotted into mainstream media, mm. like put on like TV shows and all that same, stuff. Same, yes. Whereas like I've never been asked to be on any TV shows in Canada or yeah. anything like that or definitely not in America. And so like. There's a difference in, I think, in how the, like all that stuff works. Oh, yeah. The Dutch influencers, they're the bigger influencers, but they're on TV shows now. They're on magazine covers. Yeah. They're celebrities at this yeah, point yeah, in the yeah. Netherlands, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a very that's very interesting how that's different from this side of yeah. the ocean, basically, yeah. and that side of the ocean. It is bizarre, though, right, that, like, most people have no idea who we are. Mm -hmm. Like, you go walk down the street like do people not know who you are most i mean I people, get why people most don't... people do not know who i am oh cool. most people do you like that oh i love it that's the best part about youtube is like you get some of the perks of of people knowing yeah. you fame but then you don't get the a lot of the negatives of fame that i can go down the street and like okay yeah sometimes somebody yeah. will recognize me but like it's not all the time it's not mm. like i have to you know like sorry guys like i gotta go no it's not like that yeah like yeah there's the time uh, odd time where i'm like at the zoo with my kids and i'm like you know kai's freaking out having a tantrum i'm like uh oh, not right now <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it'd be nice that. to talk about that but like 
yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, any way impeded in life because, mm -hmm. you know, people are recognizing me or something like that. I think that's a very interesting conversation because when I talk to some non-YouTubers um, and I talk about fame because mm. I, I think it's my worst nightmare. Mm. Just yeah. because I love being anonymous. Oh, yeah. I, I value love, it a lot. Right? Yeah. I just love that I'm, especially that's what I love about being in, being in the Netherlands because no one knows me. Mm. I mean, I've been recognized. I've been recognized once in Paris, which was so strange to me. And then I think in the Apple store in my city, I've been recognized. But other than that, nothing. And I love it because I, I don't. I don't know. Also, maybe I'm a little bit too paranoid to be famous. You know, like I, <laughs> I rather be a nobody, and I love yeah. it. But then people who don't do YouTube, they're like, "Oh yeah, but you signed up for it. You know, you're mm. choosing that life." I'm yeah. Like, no, you don't yeah. choose. I mean, some people definitely choose to be famous. Yeah. But a lot of us, we're just doing what we want to do. We just want to yeah. make videos. But I mean, I would say we are choosing it. Yeah. Well. Because if you weren't choosing it, then you wouldn't be posting videos online. I, so I think we're not, or at least for me, I don't know about you, but I think we're on the same page. I don't think we choose it. I think we accept it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I guess I, that it's a it's question just, of want, maybe yes, more so. Yes, like, so, I don't necessarily want it, yeah. but I know it's a necessary evil yeah. or whatever you want to call it of of this world. And I know that I, I'm able to do the things because of this, mm -hmm. like, yeah. quote unquote, fame. Yeah. Um, so in that sense, I mean that we choose it because yeah, like you can't sure. do you, 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 you want to be a YouTuber and not have subscribers like, okay, then go and do something else, you know, go like to Vimeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Vimeo. <laughs> yeah. That you won't have any, anybody following you on there. So. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true. But it's, it's like, you know, a lot of people say things like, you know, oh, I don't care about money. Money's evil. Mm. And it's like, well, no, like money, it, it can be really great if you use it well, like you can you can like unlock some really cool oh, doors and do some really cool things. Like yeah. the fact that I was able to uh, executive produce Danny Gewurz's feature film, like if I didn't have money, I couldn't do that. And yeah. then Danny couldn't make his feature film. And you know, like the the snowball effect of that. And so yeah. like, yeah, money is, is, it doesn't make you happy necessarily up to a certain point, sure yeah. it helps. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't, it doesn't make you fulfilled or anything like that, but it can have some really great perks yeah. if used right, you know? Yeah, what I always say is money doesn't buy you happiness, but it comes with a lot of benefits. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's And it's enough. so true. I, I, I love money because I've been without money. And without the money, I wouldn't have been able to come here to hang out with my friends, yeah. do all of these things, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it definitely, it comes with a lot of benefits. Yeah, and I think that's the same with fame, right? Like, yeah, true. Like fame can be really bad and like can yeah. be used badly. And, and if that's all you're going after, then like, man, your life is going to be real empty, but it can also have some perks. It's also nice. Like I, uh, I still remember this one time I went, uh, we were flying into Iceland, which I'm flying tomorrow too. And like, as soon as I landed, we were walking, like had to like walk off the airplane and some kid was like, Hey buddy. And I was like, it right away made me feel like, oh, I have friends here. Like, yeah, this is nice. Like, right? you know, it yeah. made me feel good, even though I was tired and everything. But it made me feel good that like, oh, like, you know, I have I have companions here, you know, like it, people, you yeah. know. That's the coolest thing that wherever you go, you'll have a friend. Yeah. You'll have at least one friend. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's also just, I think that what a lot of, I don't know if a lot of people feel this about YouTube, but what I love so much about YouTube is that you can be your authentic self and people will love you for it. Right. You don't have to be any kind of version of yourself. You no. can just be your authentic weird self because you're in your own room yeah. with your camera and, and in people fact, will love it. People will love it more if yeah. you are, the more you're, you're, you are yourself, the more people love it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, 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 people can, in a, in YouTube videos, people can like sense really quickly if you're faking it, mm -hmm. if you're yeah. not being like yourself in a way, like it doesn't, it doesn't translate well. No, you for know, sure. People don't like that. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that when we start YouTube, a lot of people will feel like they have to be a certain way. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then the longer they do it, yeah. the more they calm down and they oh, actually totally. become their own version. Yeah. Or if people watch, for example, your videos a lot before they start their own channel, you'll see that these videos are all like Maddie style videos yeah, until they Peter find Peter style videos. But oh, first, there, is a, but there are so <laughs> many Peter style videos. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And then, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I don't think like um, in the sense that like, yeah, everybody's got to start somewhere. And yeah. like I copied, you know, some filmmaker dude and tried to emulate their style and then, you know, like got a bit better and like slowly developed my own mm -hmm. style, my own way of doing things. 
but like you can't you can't just like you know think about things and try to develop your own style it comes yeah. from you know imitating trying things doing things and then like but if you always just like copy and stay in somebody else's style then like i i think you're doing yourself a disservice because that's For not sure. you yeah and you you could do a lot better if you were just yourself agreed um and, and then always everybody will see you as oh you're just you're just copying you know mm -hmm. yeah agreed. have you had any of that i'm always curious because i like i was clearly not the first filmmaker on youtube mm -hmm. me and peter but me and peter kind of like made like a new style of filmmaking photography channel um without realizing it we didn't know what the heck we were doing we just <laughs> we just got lucky with timing and everything but then like you guys who came later on yeah do you feel a weird sense of like um people might think that i'm copying peter oh or we get it all like the time yeah. it's it's one of those things um i mean sometimes i even get it now where even if even if i come up with a video idea first or if i did a thing first if it's like a bigger creator who's doing it then too then yeah. i'm still oh you're doing the peter mckinnon thing or you're yeah. doing the maddie can't thing. believe you copy right even though if you look at the dates yeah. i might have done it first <laughs> yeah so yeah i think um i think that definitely that definitely happens but at the same time i think that it's also a compliment you know oh for sure yeah um some people especially in the beginning they're like oh you're the female peter mckinnon i'm like well uh, but thank you <laughs> yeah, because it's, sure. it's still a compliment <laughs> yeah, right yeah. um but yeah it's hard to it's hard to uh find your own identity yeah um because a lot of not necessarily because you, you're doing your own thing but a lot of people will try to compare you to everyone else so it's yeah. kind of hard to be your own oh yeah uh person on youtube and there's like a, a reason why a lot of people do things and it's like oh if that's a good good thing good reason good thing that i can take into my film like why not like i remember True. When I started YouTube, Casey was still like, he was, you know, huge going full on. And like, I got a boosted board and like that, that that's like the one, one time I can vividly remember people being like, oh, you're just trying to be like Casey kind of thing. But, um, I recognize that it, well, A, it was just a lot of fun, Yeah. but B, having something like a one, and then I transitioned to a one, one wheel is a way more interesting uh, storytelling tool mm -hmm. than walking <laughs> right like if i'm like all right i'm gonna go to you know peter's office yeah and i just found myself walking like okay it might be cool once but if it's always just me walking yeah whereas like me one wheeling is like you're moving fast yeah. you're on this thing it's like you I mean, can you film the run. one wheel you yeah, 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 yeah yeah <laughs> somebody's gonna be the run run guy who just <laughs> runs everywhere i mean i'm the bike girl <laughs> i bike everywhere on yeah. my on my dutch bike biking is very hard because where do you put you can't hold a camera well and stuff like that it's like it's yeah. much harder that's why i love the one because your hands are free you can just film you can are you whatever. allowed to do that is it legal to one wheel? Yeah, to be on your phone or film something while you're on your one wheel? I don't think. Well, I mean, first of all, I don't even know if one wheels are <laughs> <laughs> legal or not. I, at one point, I think like electric skateboards weren't legal, but it's like this weird gray air. But there's definitely yeah. no laws. See, we and you guys have laws like that because you guys bike, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody bikes here. Yeah, like that's a very rare thing. Like, okay, yeah, people bike, but like you go to a high school. And there's five bikes out, out in front. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? Whereas, like, you go to high school in, in Europe and bikes. it's, like, hundreds of bikes. Yes, sets, you know? yes. And so you guys have to have laws like that. Like, no. Yeah. So you're, is that an actual law that you can't be on your phone while yes. you're biking? You will get you will get a fine for it. <laughs> but also, funny fun fact, I don't have a driver's license. I bike everywhere. Yeah, you don't need to, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the... But, yeah, here you can... You, if you want to be on your phone on your bike... You won't get taken anyway. Wow. <laughs> Even though I think that maybe here it's it's more dangerous to bike then because oh, it's yeah. not. Oh, yeah. And that's probably why people don't. Well, distances <laughs> are far and yeah, there's no like bike lanes yeah. or like any infrastructure yeah. really to, I mean, again, there are some, but not not to the same extent. <laughs> I love that. That's a that's a law. It's I bet you it's a law here too. Just nobody follows it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Talking about money. Can I ask what are the ways that you make money from your YouTube channel? Um, there is a few ways now. I'm still working on expanding it. Okay. Um, so first, we obviously have AdSense. Mm -hmm. um, great. Yeah. Then we have sponsorships. Um, I sell some digital products. Mm -hmm. I have affiliates, so affiliate links. Um, yeah. So I'm part of different affiliate programs. I feel like there's more. Um, and if you had to rank them, 
in order of what makes you the most money? What are the most important areas? Oh, sponsorships are the mo- most lucrative for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that sponsorships, they pay definitely pay the most. Um, I do want to... So my goal for 2022, which is not working out, was to create a course. So that would have been another, which would hopefully be ranking number two. Courses I'm, are tough. It yeah. takes so much work and so much effort. Yeah, so I still haven't done that. But yeah. that was, <laughs> that's going to be a 2023 goal. Um, and then I think... Gosh, I don't know, actually. Um, so definitely sponsorships first. Yeah. Then I think for me, my AdSense is not that high, to be honest. So I think maybe between AdSense and affiliate, it's somewhere there. Right, yeah. Um, and digital products are actually doing much better now. So that I see I see an incline there. Nice. So. But yeah, def- just sponsorships, number one. <laughs> what in- about you? It's interesting how, yeah, sponsorships definitely nowadays, but it didn't used to be up until like, well, A, I, I didn't do... I. I um, like had a strategy of saying no to mm. more of them. I wanted to, you know, a there's probably a little bit of the like, oh, I'm not going to be a sellout, you know, a little bit of that. Like, Been there. You know, I'm still kind of there. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sell out. Yeah. Um, and I, I also thought about like if every video has a sponsored thing in it, like it can be annoying for the audience. Mm. And so yeah. I wanted my videos to just be like as fun as possible for people. Um, but I also think. Uh, you know, I started in 2017. I don't think sponsorships were as lucrative or as good back mm. then. And then they also asked for, you know, like old school traditional media stuff, which was just like, it made it a big headache. And I was like, I don't want to yeah. deal with this. And also when you, uh, the smaller you are, I think the more you have to deal with agencies. So agencies will try to find, you know, s- smaller creators to work with and do these kind of like, quote unquote, smaller deals. Yeah. Um, and the agencies just F things up a lot of times, you know, the agencies, uh, just make it a lot more like tricky. Whereas if I can just talk to the brand, it'd be very simple, very yeah. easy. There's no miscommunications. There's it's no broken fast. telephone. It's it doesn't exactly, take weeks. Exactly. Yeah. You don't have to send it to the, the agency who then sends Ugh. it to the brand yeah. and then it comes back and then comes. And so all of that stuff, I just didn't enjoy it as much in the beginning. And now I feel, I feel like I've figured out a way to like do it that that makes sense for me mm-hmm. and it also is much more lucrative nowadays um yeah brand deals are the first then probably my digital products then probably adsense and affiliates i feel like are like nowadays they affiliates go up and down adsense is very consistent for me it's like yeah it's like slowly increases but sometimes it's up sometimes it's mm-hmm. a little down but very consistent um i feel like affiliates you know like amazon affiliates used to be really good for me now i think it i think i assume it's because of the attp or whatever the apple app transparency tracking i think that what's happening is that the amazon links don't get tracked properly anymore okay. and so like before they got tracked really well that if somebody clicked yeah then like you would get that money from mm-hmm. now i feel like we're missing out on a lot of it even if people click you're not yeah. always getting it necessarily because of these app tracking issues nowadays um, so like uh, Amazon affiliates, I, I used to make like five, six, seven thousand dollars sometimes wow. a month on, on Amazon affiliates. And I was like, oh, that's huge. Now yeah. they're way down for me. Mm. But then other affiliate links will do really well. And so like it's uh, and that's, yeah. that was always my strategy when I started. It was like multiple revenue streams. Yes, that's so if one important. goes down, it's OK. Yeah. Like this one might go up or I still have yeah. five other ones. But it's interesting to talk about the courses. When I started you doing YouTube, I, I set myself um a few different goals one was to um get a million views um one was to get a hundred thousand subscribers in my first year which was like the uh, whatever crazy audacious goal that like wasn't gonna happen so wait you started youtube because you wanted to be a full-time youtuber that was your goal no Uh, so i i actually didn't even want to be the face of the channel i tried to find somebody else to be like the face of the channel um but what i did want was I wanted freedom in my in my work. That's mm. what I wanted. And YouTube was the best way of getting that freedom. So I didn't actually want to be a YouTuber necessarily. Okay. I just knew that that was the best way for me to be able to do the work that I want to do when yeah. I want to do it and not have to wait for anybody else to like, hey, yeah. would you like to do this job? You know, I hated that when I was freelancing because you never knew when, where, what, you know, and so... You know, it's fine when you're single, whatever, you don't have that many expenses. Then you get married, you have a little bit more expenses, yeah. you get a mortgage or a house and you have kids. And like, I knew once I have kids, like I don't want to be relying on just freelance money. And so 
uh, yeah, YouTube was the best way to kind of like have more control over everything and do the, the work that mm -hmm. I would want to do. And so I had the 100,000 uh, subscribers. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Anyways, one of the goals that I put down was to make five. I already had, I already had one uh, wedding film making course. And I was like, I'm going to make five courses in the first year. Five? I did zero. Uh, well, maybe I did one. <laughs> I think I maybe did one. That was all, out of all the goals yeah. that I wrote down. Like that wasn't even the crazy one, the course in my mind. But like that was the one that like didn't didn't happen, you know? Yeah, it's it's tough, man. I really thought that I would have time because it was like, oh, I have the entire year and now yeah. it's Q4 and yeah. I haven't even started <laughs> brainstorming. I know the topic of the course, yeah. but that's basically it. Oh, I've even written down a few different courses and, and we, me and Peter, actually, we're going to make a course together. We even Ooh. filmed like the intro for it. Nice. Where's that course? No idea. Like, you know, we never... And uh, that's actually one of the things that we're, we're trying to figure out with Tyler and some other people, like a, a better way of, of, you know, disseminating that information mm -hmm. without having to, you know, work for months yeah. to get this course. Cause yeah. That's it's really hard when yeah. you're already doing all your, you know, <laughs> YouTube is already a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it is a lot. I think I think what's interesting, what you mentioned before about um, Amazon and the tracking that didn't work well. It, 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 it This is half speculation. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, full, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, full, okay. yeah, yeah, full yeah, 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 we don't yeah, know. Yeah, We're yeah, speculating. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's very interesting because um, for both of us, brand deals are the most lucrative. That being said, brand brands, they measure the conversion right mm, yeah, and yeah. a conversation that i have with some of the brands is like okay you know we have this link but i feel like we're mostly planting seats yeah because yeah. i remember watching your videos and yeah. these videos and you were doing all of these things with yep. epidemic sound for example but i didn't immediately buy you know a subscription until i needed it mm -hmm. and i think that that is a very interesting conversation to have with a lot of brands yeah um because they're usually looking also I make a lot of evergreen content. So, mm. you know, in the first month, it might just not be outperforming, but let's look in a few months or in a year, yeah. it's going to be, it, it will have over a hundred thousand views or more, you know? Yeah. Um, so that is a very interesting discussion to have. It, it's, uh, that's why I still like the brand money that people are getting paid is already crazy. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. pretty like, holy crap. Um, but I think it's still very low actually because it is based mostly on ROI, how much yeah. you're actually bringing in. And there's little to no value on the brand value that you're bringing to that other brand. And so like when you say, I like Adobe products, yeah, that means a lot, whether or not they go and buy a subscription yeah. right away from that, you saying that, that's a different question. Like that's yeah. also would be nice, but that might not happen. Yeah. And they might not just, they might just not use your link either. If the company doesn't set up a good like incentive to use that link, yeah. if there's no 30% off or you know whatever, if this incentive isn't enough, they might not just use your link or they might use a friend's link, but you yeah. first told them about that product and then they see it on another person's video and then they finally use that link. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're, you're right. That's a lot of people. Um, there's sometimes still very rarely a company will be like, Hey, we, we would love to work with you. Mm -hmm. We really value what you do. Uh, here's an affiliate link and, uh, you can make a video yeah. and like, you'll get 30% of whatever. And yeah. I'm like, listen, like I, why would I take all of the risk here because i don't know if your product is even going to appeal to my audience in the way that you think it is mm -hmm. um i don't know if the affiliate link that you're giving has enough incentive for people to actually use it and you're not valuing my brand value at all like mm -hmm. the fact that i'm getting your company out to a hundred thousand people or whatever it is fifty thousand people that they hear who you are. Yeah. Like, where's the value? Like, where are you valuing that, you know? And I think what's really important to remember is that you're giving them a lifelong ad. Like, yeah, yeah, It will yeah. be in your yeah. videos forever. Yeah, yeah. So that 30-day performance, I mean, it you'll get eyeballs on yeah. this forever, yeah. especially with our kind of content with yeah. tutorials and, you know, reviews that will live for a very long time. Yeah. Um, but but I think about it like you know you're in a, you're in you know uh, the Scotiabank Arena which is our, our arena I think uh -huh. it seats around twenty to thirty thousand people. How much does an ad? Do you put an ad in that arena. How much yeah. does that cost somebody? Mm. And what demographic are you like? You don't even know who's gonna see that. 
Plus, there's no link to click. There's no nothing like, and companies and pay a lot yes, of money spend for that. A lot of money on a that. Also, lot commercials, of money. everything yeah, on TV. Yeah, TV commercials. Like you know, there's no. There's how are they measuring ROI on that? They right? can't. But right? then they're like, oh, Maddie, we can we can we can give you two hundred dollars. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I play actually very hard ball. Like at least I th- I think I do with with brands mm-hmm. because I I think I I understand my value and there's. There's a lot of companies that want that. And I only have a few videos a yeah. month to put, you know, an ad on. And so I always aim pretty high. And especially if it's like, oh, we're super busy and like, you know, there's yeah. a lot going on. We'll just throw out stupid numbers that like I don't even think are going to go through. And a lot of times they go through and they're like, yeah, let's go. I was like, OK, fine. <laughs> like, that's yeah, let's do it. You yeah, know, that's great. Um, I, but I think a lot of people, a lot of creators because they're not as business minded they don't know how to do that yeah they don't know how to value them their, themselves as well yeah you know? and i think this space is pretty it's not really transparent when it comes to numbers right oh, so yeah. it's, it's 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 also quite tough especially when you're starting out i feel like now i have a good understanding of what to charge and you know i have a very open conversation with my friends about you know what we all charge and it's not a matter of, oh, they charge this much, so I'm going to charge the same. But you have yeah. a better understanding of the ballpark. Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a tough area to navigate through when you're just starting out um, yeah. with how much to charge. I did study business in school, so I feel like I have the best of both worlds. Yeah. I know how to do business and I know how to make vids. So, That's good. Yeah. I always t- like say to like creatives who are like real creatives, like artist people, I'm like, man, you should be going to business school, not art school. Yeah. Like because the art stuff comes naturally, right? Yeah. The business stuff doesn't come naturally to most creatives Mm -hmm. they just like and if they just understood the business side or like worked on a little bit more man the doors that would open up for those people and they could do so much more of the things that they really want to do um but then yeah people don't focus on the business side and then you're you're kind of a struggling artist all all the time you know um we actually we've mentored a few different youtube channels with with tyler and like it's that feeling of like, oh, I feel so bad because you could be doing so much better with just a few small tweaks, mm-hmm. you know, a few ongoing like, you know, like, hey, you know, this way, not that way. Um, do it this way. Even like little things like, you know, Amazon affiliate link, like yeah. you could just put a link in your description and say like, um, you know, here's the camera I use Canon R5. Mm-hmm. Well, then why is anybody going to click on that link? Whereas like if you you clickbait the link with like my favorite camera to use for my youtube channel well to find out what that camera is they have to click on that link and now you have at least a chance of them buying something later on from amazon and like little things like that people just don't think about and and they make a a drastic difference to to your business you know what's been um what's been the best thing about youtube so far for you I think the community, yeah. To be honest, just um, my friends and being on Twitter and in the and just in the comments and everything, just meeting people and just hanging out with them yeah. online, that for me is worth everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and being obviously being able to do, there's nothing that I would rather do than what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So I feel like that is a big gift. But definitely my community, like the whole, I don't know, it just, <laughs> yeah. I, I love it so much. Um, yeah, so community, I'd say. And what's the hardest things about being a YouTuber now? You've been and you've been in this for two years now, basically um, a year and a half, two years. Full time. Well, full time, yeah. One and a half, yeah. yeah, yeah. The hardest thing is juggling everything. I feel like <laughs> it's it's very tough. Um, I am struggling a lot. So I feel like everyone kind of goes through this. I have this quarterly YouTube crisis that I go through. I message my friends. I'm like, yo, I'm being very dramatic about it because. You know, when you do it for a living and when it's your business, there's money involved. Mm. And I'm also a creative. Like I want I started YouTube because I just wanted to make vids. I love storytelling. I just want to do creative projects. Um, but that won't bring me the money that mm. I need in order to continue to do this. Yeah. So it's always that back and forth. And then, you know, I'll get to a point where like, OK, I know what I'm going to do. And I have this plan. And then after two months, I'm, I'm, I message my friends again. I'm like, hey, I'm back kind of sucks (laughs) i don't know what to do because you know we have all of these analytics that we have to look at but i don't want to look at them (laughs) i just want to make this uh so i think that is probably the hardest part is navigating through i just want to make videos and 
this is also a business now mm. you know yeah especially when you have people that depend on you um yeah what about you what is your what's the hardest part for Ooh, you i think my heart the hardest thing for me right now is that there's just so many things that I would like to do. Mm. There's so many doors that are are now open and I just don't have the time for all of them. Yeah. And even right now, I feel like, uh, like I feel like I might have to close some doors because there's so many doors open right now that mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, you're never gonna, you're never gonna be able to do all the things you want to do. Yeah. And there's always going to be better and more and, you know. What a great problem to have, though. No, but that's, that's for everybody um, yeah. in the end. That's that, like, you know, life is an infinite amount of, you know, opportunities. If you just yeah. want to go for it, and, like you work hard. Um, but you're, you're never going to be able to do all the things you want to mm. do. And that's the same thing with your your work life, your, you know, your social life with your retirement. You're never going to be able to do all the things on your bucket list because there's going to be more that come on there yeah. once you finish them. Oh, that would be nice too. Um, and so it's that it's kind of that realization now. It's like, okay, uh, you know, I don't like saying no to things, but like if I say yes, I'm saying no to a whole bunch of other things because yeah. it's taking up my time now. Um, and then of course I have kids, I have family, you know, like, and so all this stuff, that's the hardest thing I think right now. It's just like, and I don't want to, I think it's the saddest thing when somebody burns out doing what they love doing. Mm. And so like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And so I would much rather be like cognizant of like, okay, what's happening? You know, is this too much? Okay. Like reevaluate like any, like, you know, COVID life mm. was very weird. And like, yeah. you had all this extra time in a way. And so like, I was like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. And now, now we're not in COVID world and it's like, oh, okay, well let's reevaluate. Like mm -hmm. what's, you know, what should we, yeah. we be doing still, you know? Yeah. Um, what would you, if somebody wanted to start a YouTube channel right now, what kind of advice would you give them? Make sure that you do it for the right reasons. And when I say right <laughs> reasons, it's like do it because you love it. Because I think that if you want to start a YouTube channel because you want to be famous or you want money, you're going to be severely disappointed and you're going to be burned out. Yeah. That's what I think. I think that if you love what you do and you can wait to make more videos and it's just the, just the thing that you live and breathe every day, yeah. you're going to be fine. And I would expand to that, that it doesn't actually be, have, it doesn't have to be the, the making the videos part that you have mm -hmm. to love. Yeah. It has to be the, the thing that you're doing in the yeah. videos. So like for us, it's one and the same. You yeah. know, we're making videos about filmmaking. It's like a little bit of a weird niche in that that sense. But like if you're like, oh, I'm going to start a finance channel. Finance channels are popping right now. And you don't actually like finance yeah. or like you're not you're not constantly watching finance videos and reading blogs and listening yeah. to podcasts about finance. Then that's the wrong channel for you to start. Absolutely. You will hate it. And you're right. If you, anytime somebody starts, I don't know if you've seen it. Anytime somebody starts with the, like, I'm going to make money or I'm going to get famous. Yeah. Never works out. No, it, it doesn't. never works out. I've heard so many people say, I'm going to be the next blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be the next <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But yeah. then they realize how much time it takes and how much effort. Because yeah. I think that a lot of people still think that being on YouTube means making cute little videos on the internet mm. while there's an entire business and we're working probably more than a lot of people that we know, but we love what we do. But that's why it's so important to love what you do. Mm. Um, it could be the topic. It could be just yeah. making the videos. I have a question for you. Mm. Would you, would you, is there anything else that you would like to, no, wait, let me rephrase that. Sometimes let's just, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it to me. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like it would have been better to not start a YouTube about, or a YouTube channel about filmmaking, filmmaking. Mm. but use my filmmaking and my and my yeah. love for storytelling for anything else. Yeah. Do you ever feel that way? I personally don't feel okay. like that because filmmaking is my, yeah. is my, yeah. like, I, I was, you know, I started, I didn't grow up thinking like, I want to be a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I, d I hated art class, all that. I would have never taken a photography class in high school or yeah. anything like that. Never. Um, and then I was like, I don't know, it was probably like 20, 21 or something like that, 22. I used to skate like, or film skate videos and stuff like that. That was like my, That's you know. That's so classic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all I did. And then like when I was like around 21 or something like that, 22, I was like, oh, like, hmm, like cameras and video like we started taking some photos and videos my yeah. brother got a dslr first i was like oh this is interesting we started making some other videos and then i started making some church videos and then i started making some other videos and then 
like I was literally watching like video co-pilot tutorials, which are like After Effects tutorials, trying yeah. to figure out this like filmmaking thing just because I thought it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Like it was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, oh, okay, we have this camera gear and stuff. And like, we're, we kind of know what we're doing. Like, let's shoot a wedding. We didn't know what we're doing. Let's shoot a wedding. <laughs> and like, <laughs> you know, and yeah. then like we made money. It's like, oh, you can make money. Like, we're just like, we're still learning, but like you can make money. Yeah. Um, and so like, it, and, and I, I, so I really love this area, but I also, which I think a lot of people might not have is like, I really like teaching people. Yeah. Like I could have been a teacher. I, oh, even in, in like, you know, high school, I like teaching like my friend, like, oh, here's how to do this math thing, yeah. you know? Um, and so like it fits for me really well, but for most people, I would say, especially nowadays, I was like, don't start a filmmaking channel. Yeah. Just use your filmmaking skills. What are you really into yeah. that you would like just day in, day out, watch videos about, you could talk mm -hmm. to your friends about and then do it around that, yeah. but just use your skills. Like my friend, I don't know if you know Steve Antonioni, Cash College. Mm. He's like, especially his newest film, he's like pushing the boundaries on like filmmaking. And he's not even like, he is a finance dude yeah. who like picked up filmmaking he's really good like better than most of us filmmaker people that's awesome um and he's perfect example of like he sets himself apart because he's able to tell stories visually and mm. like creatively in finance you know it's not just him sitting there talking yeah. about money it's like this whole interesting short film thing yeah um yeah yeah, because do you it, regret it then? No, I don't. So that's the thing. Like, there's nothing more I'd rather do than like I love filmmaking. And if you would ask me, like, okay, what would you do on YouTube then if it wasn't the filmmaking? Yeah. I wouldn't know because I love, I yeah, love yeah. it. So that but is I, your thing. Yeah, but I, I, I do feel like sometimes if you would take those skills into any other niche, it would really be successful because the filmmaking niche can be quite competitive. Everyone is so good at filmmaking in this niche, you know? But I love it. But you don't have to be the best. I'm definitely not the best filmmaker in the world. By far. Like, oh, so not even close. Like, there are so many way more talented filmmakers mm. than I am. Denny is great, but, by the way. Exactly. Yeah. Like, Danny Gilbert's way better filmmaker than I am. Like, well, I'm not saying better. that, but he's great. 100% way better <laughs> filmmaker than I am. Um, but, like nobody can be me you know mm, yeah nobody can make my stupid videos the way i make them nobody can teach yeah. in the way that i teach you know like people could try but it doesn't work out it's not their style it's my style mm. um and so yeah i don't i don't feel that pressure of like you know now i, I do understand what you're talking about it's like you know oh, look at look how many videos Mr. Beast or Iraq is getting like views are the views are insane and my views are just so small, you know. But actually, like per subscriber per view, mm -hmm. you have a, a chance to make a way bigger business True. than an Iraq can or Mr. Beast. Well, maybe Mr. Beast because he's you know a different level Mr. now. Mr. Beast but, is very but like <laughs> trying to do like a prank channel, you know, yeah. or something that's like that that sort of category. It's gonna get a ton of views. Yeah. Um, but like is a brand going to want to advertise in your video? Mm. Maybe not. Okay. What brand would ad advertise? What's your actual demographic? Like, yeah. you know, you have specific, like, you know, and so I, I, in my, you know, going back to the fame thing, this is the perfect niche. True. You don't have that to is, be big. Yes. Very you, like true. You, you are, you are big already. You have a lot of following, but like, you don't have to be, you know, mm -hmm. Iraq big. That's true. You know, that's true. Yeah. No, I mean, when so when, when I was in LA, shout out to my friends Hayden and Ashley. They're great. I was I was with them. Hayden Peterson? Uh Hillier Smith. Oh, Hayden, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, okay. And he was working on this edit and I was working on this edit with him or like I was just yeah. kind of looking over his shoulder giving him some some suggestions and I was like, I love this. I love filmmaking. I love mm. editing. I love the storytelling. I love yeah. all of it. So yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's just one of those things that's just a random thought in my head. But then I also won't know what else I would want to do. Listen, everybody, everybody at some point has this feeling of like, should I pivot? Mm. And yeah. It, and I think it comes. I think it mostly comes from like maybe a little bit of like boredom. That like, oh, it'd be nice to do something else. Yeah. But then it also comes from like. I'm not just a filmmaker, guys, you know, like, yeah, I also, you know, I am also really into this thing, you yeah. know, or that like, yeah, like sometimes I think like, man, I, I really like snowboard, like maybe I should just, I'll just take a hiatus and mm. do a snowboard channel, you know, like, or something yeah. like that. Or like, I like all these random extreme, extreme sports. 
you know that'd be fun but like mm, would it be like do i really want to like maybe i'll just keep that as my hobby like and i can bring that into my videos now every once in a while i think a lot about like a storyline and b storyline b storyline you can bring in anything true anything you want like i bought an electric surfboard you know bring that Mm. into your video Um, me and tyler want to go snowboard in whistler all right what videos are we making while we're (laughs) whistler you know like that's great you know true so don't feel like you have to limit yourself, you know? That's No, that's true. I do think that right now I'm very much into the whole like editing tutorial stuff and I would like to expand that more because it was never my intention to become a tutorial yeah, yeah. channel. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of, but I do, like my mom is a teacher, so I love to teach as well. It's kind of just oh, yeah. in, in me, but there's also s- only so much you can teach, right? So yeah. you have to do things in yeah. order to then oh, yeah. have new things to teach. Yeah, if you're not doing, then you're, yeah. you're, not, yeah. you're not learning yourself anymore mm-hmm. and then you're going to run yeah. But it's also like I go through like these phases of like I started out doing tutorials and, and some travel videos and whatever. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of bored of tutori- doing tutorials. I'm just going to review gear. Whoa, wow, these videos are getting so many views. But then actually when you look at it, like the tutorials most of the time destroy the gear videos yeah. over time. Over time. Absolutely. In the yeah. beginning, you get a lot of clicks on the gear stuff new, especially if you've got an embargo product or something. But then it plateaus. And then that's like... yeah that year maybe you'll get a little bit more two years later nobody's clicking on that video anymore but you make a video on like transitions or something like that that could live for five years i'm sure absolutely i'm sure my how to make gopro look cinematic still gets views even though none of that stuff is what i would do anymore <laughs> i think i've watched that video that is, like that is an old so, one right? it was so good for that time yeah. but now we're way past like i'm using like after effects in there and stuff like that to defish and yeah. all that like I would never do that now. Like, that's stupid, you know? Yeah. Um, you got real steady now. You shoot four by three. <laughs> like, you know, maybe I should make a new version of how yeah. to make GoPro look cinematic. Why not? Um, but yeah, pe- people still watch that, you know? Mm. Whereas, like, if I made a review about some camera back then, nobody's watching that. Yeah. Know? Listen, I think we should go get some lunch or something, some yes. food or some, you know? chill for a bit thank you so much for uh coming on the podcast i appreciate you flying all the way from the netherlands for this i know this yes, podcast is, is that big that tyler knows <laughs> thanks so much uh thank you you, so we much gotta have you on here me. again when you move to canada you know yes you come let's do it <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks.